They came from Africa, but the year and situation isn't exact. Some researchers say they arrived on slave boats that shipwrecked in the Caribbean in the 1600s. Others say they came to the Americas as early as the 1300s. Either way, a group of Africans made their home on the island of St. Vincent, where they mixed with the native people. The new people became the Garifuna. St. Vincent was a battleground in the 17th and 18th centuries. The natives, British, French, and Dutch all had claims on the island. In 1763, the Europeans signed a treaty that gave St. Vincent to the British Empire, but it didn't guarantee control of the island. British forces battled the Garifuna for decades until 1797, when the battered Garifuna finally surrendered. The British then exiled the defeated nation to the island of Roatan. It wasn't long before unsustainable conditions there forced the outcasts to relocate. The coasts of Honduras, Belize, Guatemala, and Nicaragua became the new home for the people. There are now an estimated 300,000 Garifuna in Central America and another 100,000 in the United States. This is a story about the Garifuna. Garífuna se generaliza más que todo en costumbres, creencias, religión. Tenemos las danzas, las gastronomías. Es una cultura que es rica en todo. Culture is like a train, and the road where the, where the train rolls is our language. Despite the fact that our ancestors were exiled and we ended up in different countries, we actually still identify as Garifunas and we can communicate among each other, regardless of the country, in our own language. <laughs> They are people who live along the coast. They're very comfortable at sea. And a lot of the men, you know, started working on the boats. Como la gente fueron de marino, se quedó en los Estados Unidos, ya la familia de uno son unidas, se lleva uno, se van cinco. I consider them a transnational group, meaning that they have homelands within the United States, within Belize, within Guatemala, within Nicaragua, and Honduras. So they kind of are you know, New York, Miami, and Houston, New Orleans, Chicago, LA, San Francisco is also another place. Where your neighbors, where you go to church with you, you see us in your supermarket, but you know, people just think we're usually African American or anything, and they don't know anything else about us. We see somebody in by phenotypes by just how they look, skin color, also by hair, we just assume that you can either be white or black. It's simple categories. The really great thing about learning about the Garifuna is that you realize that those racial categories are super, super simple. And they don't encapsulate the massive complexity that really exists. Being black doesn't mean X, Y, Z. It can mean all this other stuff as well. So the Garifuna can just break all kinds of you know, assumptions that people have about all that stuff. When you move to the United States, it's a lot easier to assimilate and just get accustomed to the American way of life and you get kind of, you know, lost. Principalmente viviendo en la ciudad de Nueva York, todo eso es, es, es rápido. No se dirige más hacia la, hacia la cultura, sino que 
hacia lo que está ahí presente. Me fui adaptando a la vida, a la vida ya. I was young when I left from here, so I ain't know no better. The negativity called my eye, not the, not the positive thing. The girls, nice cars, clothes, the fast money. Yo cuando estaba en Honduras, yo no usaba droga. Yo nunca sabía de que iba a usar droga. Pero más sin embargo, aquí la vine a usar. La inmigración se empezó a dar dentro de la cultura garífona por busca de una mejor oportunidad y buscar el famoso sueño americano, donde yo podría decir de que en vez de un sueño americano, se convirtió en una pesadilla americana. I was part of a gang over there. I ain't gonna lie. Which one? I was a blood. Yeah. Being a part of a gang is rough. It's rough, real rough. I got locked up for it, did things for it, because I had somebody with a pistol. I ain't shoot him, but I hit him. I did six years, and then they sent the portal back here. The 20 that come from here, the people from the United States, Yo creo que por lo menos cinco o seis regresan deportados. Muchas personas están trayendo lo que es la, uh, la cultura norteamericana aquí. Entonces nosotros estamos viendo que lo que es nuestra cultura se nos está como yendo de nuestra mano. Esa en la cultura garífuna que muchos de nosotros los garífunas no lo vemos. It's not that they rejected the culture, it's not that they were totally consumed by the American culture, it was just that they didn't have an alternative. I don't speak her. You know, I know a little bit, um, and I didn't learn as a kid. I was born in Long Beach, California. My whole family is from Belize. I'm the first generation born in the States. I've been listening to Griffin music since I was young. Never knew what they were saying, but <laughs> it's just like a language that my mom and, you know, our family uses, but for our generation, it's just, you know, English. And I guess they look at it as, you know, we're in the States now and we're learning all kinds of other things that have to do with, you know, this culture. Quiero creer que cuando usted está perdiendo algo, es cuando usted siente la importancia de ese algo. Y es cuando usted lo quiere rescatar, lo quiere valorar. Whatever we want to do with the future of the Garifuna, this is the moment to take the action. The strength of the Garifuna people is Aurubuni Amurunoni. I for you and you for me. No matter like I was born here in America or somebody's born in Honduras, born in Guatemala, born in Belize, um, that we're all still the same. And that we all have something to offer each other, you know, different insights. Regardless of whether it's the home country or whether it's here, I adapt and I can continue to promote, nurture the culture. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon to all of you listening to La Bugada.com radio. 101 people listening online right now, plus the other people who are listening who are not connected to Facebook. But Places as far away as Guatemala, you know, people are listening in the Garifuna villages. People are very excited to know that, that we support the Garifuna music and, 
and that we do what we do because of the love of the culture, you know. We don't get paid for this. Nobody does. We have more music 24-7, the only radio station on the air online that plays Garifuna music 24-7, and also in Spanish and in Garifuna and in English. So, hey, que motia, wabina ha, wafedu ha. In some of my research, I, I look at Facebook as a way for transnational immigrants to, to stay in touch, to communicate with family back home, with friends and families in other cities. Ahorita mira cómo está Facebook. Está saturado de garífuna. Ellos bajan la música, meten la foto, ponen los eventos que están pasando en aquel pueblo, ponen los eventos que están pasando en Nueva York en la comunidad garífuna. Así, no importa dónde un garífuna esté, él pueda llegar a ser parte de ello y poder ver y sentir también lo que está aconteciendo. Por medio de ese Facebook conocí a una persona que él me va a, estar, me va a enseñar a, a escribir el garífuna. De hecho, pongo unos mensajes, a veces lo poco que sé en garífuna, lo pongo los mensajes en, en Facebook, lo pongo en garífuna. Many people have asked me the question, do you think that the garífuna language is going to become extinct? And my response has always been no. Not only no, but emphatically no. Garifuna American Heritage Foundation United. Um, it was basically an organization to geared towards reacculturating the Garifuna people here in the United States. We have this classroom that is full of people every Saturday, learning their language, learning about their history, about their culture. I mean, I'm curious about it, and that's, that's why I'm here. I'm trying to learn more about Garifuna culture. I want to learn the language. It is a regular bird. We're preserving it, protecting it, so the next generation will have it for them, waiting for them. Where I teach a little drumming. A little language. You know, a little singing in Garifuna. To see them playing the drums, to see them singing in Garufuna, you know, to see them enjoying it, it's, um, can't really describe it. As a parent, you know, when you see your kids happy, it, it makes you happy, it makes you feel good as well. You know, it's a parent's responsibility to, to pass on their culture, to teach their kids, to raise them. And I didn't have that, so that's something that I want to give them. that what, what Garifuna culture was 300 years ago or 200 years ago is not going to be the same that it is today. Lots of things have changed, some things have been lost, some things have been gained, some things have been modified. I feel like the book on Garifuna and their identity is continuously being written. What I think is being preserved is identity as Garifuna, right? As just the sense that I am Garifuna, whether I speak the language, whether I know how to dance Mascoro isn't so crucial as do I identify with my community. Entonces tenemos que combinar el pasado con el presente. Solo ahí se puede sobrevivir. You could have yours and still learn other things. It doesn't diminish who you are as a person. In fact, it makes you a stronger person, a better person. Know who you really are, 
then you know where to go. You know your past, you know where you're coming from, you know where you're at today. Then you have a route, you already have a route trace, right? What was um, already programmed to disappear in the next 20 years, which is our language, our culture, I think it's gonna last a little longer than that. want my children like my parents taught me you are Garifuna they would say Garifuna Bugia you know you are Garifuna you know you're here in America but don't forget you're Garifuna when we come and we migrate to any country you know it's when in Rome you do as the Roman but then you lose a piece of yourself if you forget who you are so it's very important for every culture not just the Garifuna but every culture in the world to just kind of get back have that conversation with your grandparents and know your, your lineage, know your heritage, and preserve your culture. Eso es lo que nuestros ancestros nos han heredado. Y eso es lo que Dios nos ha dado a nosotros, nuestra propia cultura. Tenemos lo nuestro y tenemos que conservarlo y tenemos que cuidarlo y tenemos que rescatarlo otra vez. Y tenemos un, una batalla tan grande que volver a rescatar lo que es nuestro. Y tenemos que hacerlo, y podemos hacerlo. Sí.